Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm going to do another graphite pencil drawing with these new Faber-Castell pit graphite matte pencils. This time it's going to be a portrait of Kate Beckinsale. Let's have a look. So, uh, this time I wanted to test these new pencils doing something uh, a little bit more challenging, a little bit more complex. And it's going to be a female portrait. The size of the paper is going to be 9 times 12 inches, just a little bit larger than the previous one. And I'm going to use a full range of pencils, which was probably a mistake because uh, that actually makes uh, the drawing process a little bit more complicated and a little bit more difficult. Normally, <coughs> I would probably use no more than four or five pencils when I work in graphite. So um, I already did a video, the previous one, where I did a small review of these pencils, these new pencils. I did a series of small tests and I did a drawing of an elephant. I thought they performed pretty well because they pretty much do whatever graphite pencils do except that they are more matte there isn't uh, there isn't as much uh, graphite shine so they are a lot less reflective so for graphite pencil artists they should be able to uh, get used to these very quickly and they will immediately see the advantage of, uh, of that lack of graphite shine. Now I'm starting with the hair and I'm going to get to narrating the drawing process in just a minute. I just wanted to say a few more words about the pencils. I don't think they blend quite as well as regular graphite pencils, but uh, they're close enough. So they can be blended and they can be erased pretty well, uh, which makes them pretty easy to work with. <clears throat> but they feel a little bit different than regular graphite pencils. But like I said, uh, I so far I didn't really uh, find that uh, there was something uh, I could do with regular graphite pencils that I can't do with these. Naturally. Uh, graphite pencils and these composite new pencils, uh, which are probably a mixture of graphite and something else, uh, they behave like graphite pencils. They can do what graphite pencils do, which means that you can't really compare them to some other types of pencils, like for example pastel pencils or charcoal pencils. If I tried to do something like this, especially the hair in charcoal, this would be much, much faster because charcoal is simply faster to work with, faster to blend, uh, cover large areas, uh, achieve those darker tones etc. So even these pencils have their own limitations that's what I wanted to say. Anyway let me get back to talking about the drawing process. I started drawing the hair and I started out by defining some of the darker areas in between the segments and uh, that's uh, that's one of the things that I need to do first because I need to define the shape and the structure of the hair and in order to do that I have to define the relationships between the lighter areas and darker areas and naturally I'm not going to do all of the hair at once because I like to work from left to right and from top to bottom being right-handed of course to minimize the smudging even though to be honest there isn't that much smudging with these pencils so one of the problems here, uh, one of the problems I encountered and one of the reasons why the hair looks a little bit messy at times is because because I am forced to record top down and I am trying to minimize the amount of uh, rotating and moving the paper around. Uh, so I want to um, I want to make this uh, video more viewer friendly and that wouldn't be that wouldn't be the case I think if I kept rotating it 
uh, or I, ha I would have to do a significant amount of editing on my video but uh, it's always easier to draw hair by uh, by rotating the drawing a little bit and adjusting the angle uh, uh, angle uh, of, uh, of your strokes of your pencil strokes so here I started working on her clothes a little bit and because uh, these don't blend quite as well as uh, for example charcoal I had to be a little bit more patient in layering in laying down the texture of, of her jacket now let me get back to talking about the hair so the best way to draw hair is of course by using tapered strokes and the good thing about tapered strokes is that you can also curve them and then you can make them join in the middle you can start from, uh, from one side and then you can pull similar tapered strokes from the other side and then uh, you can uh, create uh, darker areas around the ends and allow them to meet in the middle creating a natural highlight because uh, if you look at uh, the way if you look at the shape of her hair you will see that it's a little bit lighter around those round parts uh, where the where the hair is kind of bulging out and is uh, facing the light source so that's where it's going to be lighter so you can start from the darker areas using a tapered stroke and allowing the tapered stroke to create a seamless transition in the middle, leaving the middle a little bit lighter and creating some highlights. Later you can refine those highlights using a pencil eraser, but sometimes you don't even have to do that. But the problem here is that, by the way I zoomed in a little bit closer because now I'm working on the eyes and I want you to be able to see the details. Um, the problem, like I said, when recording is that uh, when I'm doing those tapered strokes, I can't change the angle because I don't want to rotate the drawing, which makes the which makes the hair look a little bit less smooth. It could have been a bit better if I were doing a bit more work off camera. So there are a few of these highlights in the eye, uh, a few of these reflections. In my reference, uh, the, the reflection was a little bit more complicated, a little bit more of those sketch lights. I decided to simplify it a little bit. Naturally, I shaded the white of the eye as well so that the catch light would stand out a bit more. Now I'm doing the rest of the eye with the eyelashes and maybe a few wrinkles. Moving on to the nose. Just shading this area, um, eye socket area, a little bit more because obviously the whole area around the, around the eyeball needs to be a bit darker than the white of the eye. So I need to add a sufficient amount of value to it. A Q-tip is a great blending tool with graphite, that's how I always felt about it. It's probably one of the best blending tools. Uh, brushes have some advantages of their own, but Q-tips are very good for achieving smooth blending. So I'm just adding a bit more value to the to some parts of the forehead, trying to define the shape of the forehead a little bit better and um, leaving a little bit of lighter value just above the eyebrows so that I could show that the eyebrow area is protruding a little bit. Uh, some of these some of these uh, change, uh, some of these uh, transitions from darker darker to lighter value are very very subtle and are very difficult to notice but they're still there so i'm counting on the fact that the viewer's eye will still be able to pick up uh, to pick up on them but the problem for me uh, the the artist is uh, interpreting them the right way 
when I look at the reference photo, I sometimes um, I'm, I'm sometimes not able to see all of these uh, all of these transitions, all of these uh, small differences in value. Naturally, um, it would be a little bit easier looking at a three-dimensional object in real life, but when you're looking at a two-dimensional picture, you have to rely on the on understanding the areas of lighter and darker value in the in the reference photo itself. Which may or may not work. Sometimes it doesn't work quite as well. Uh, what I've noticed uh, when drawing portraits, and I've done a lot of commission portraits, is that Sometimes uh, when you're looking at a two-dimensional photo of somebody you can interpret certain shapes the, the wrong way basically. You can t interpret them as something else, something that they're not in real life and then the portrait just goes the wrong way. Um, I don't know if I'm making sense, but uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, we are not photocopier machines when we draw and uh, the artist always does his best to try to understand the shape and to try to convey it to the viewer and it's never going to be 100% accurate but that's probably the beauty of of drawing portraits. Now I am going around this area in between the nose and the cheeks and the cheekbone and making the chin area and the jaw area just a little bit darker because the thing is that when we're looking at these objects or when we're looking at a face uh, from up front um, if uh, it's it's difficult to see which parts are raised and which which parts are protruding, and the only way to convey that to the viewer is by shading the sides a little bit more, and allowing the um, the middle parts, the the parts which are facing towards the light source, to be a little bit lighter, to feel like they're sticking out. And that's why if you don't shade the sides of the face, for example, or the sides of the jaw or the sides of the nose to a sufficient degree these parts of the body can end up looking a little bit too wide and too flat now this particular portrait has a lot of interesting shadows which uh, makes it uh, challenging at the same time because uh, the tricky thing about this reference photo and I'm, I'm gonna leave it in the description if you want to check it out. The tricky thing about this reference photo is that there are multiple light sources which are casting a shadow um, basically to different directions. So if you look at the, uh, the area just uh, below the chin, the neck area, just below the jo jawline, uh, we'll have two shadows essentially. One of them, the stronger one, is being cast from right to left but there's also going to be a little, a little bit of shadow going uh, in the opposite direction and if you look at the shadows here from the bangs we have some on the forehead on the right and there are some shadows uh, coming from those large earrings on the left side of the neck so uh, it's a very complex it's a very complex drawing in terms of lighting and shadows and the problem, uh, normally when you have strong shadows, they can be very good because they can help you achieve depth in your drawing. They can help you explain the shape of the face a little bit better. But when you have uh, a complicated light source with multiple shadows, then things can get a little bit difficult because it can be a little bit difficult to explain or to understand 
a certain shapes and the nose area is also good, uh, going to be a little bit complicated because there are some of these shadows uh, in between the eyes on this area this the, the area of the transition between the between the forehead and the nose and the in between the eyes so because of the shadows in my reference photo it's I found it a little bit difficult to understand what the actual width of the nose really was and how much I should shade the sides of the nose overall I found this portrait to be challenging I don't know if I achieved a great likeness uh, with, a, with a reference photo. I suppose I achieved a decent amount of likeness with the actress that I was drawing, but it probably could have been a little bit better. And another thing that kind of makes, uh, made things a little bit more complicated for me was the fact that I wanted to use a full range of these pencils and this is something that I'm going to advise you against from now on if you have a larger set like this one and this is an 8 piece set uh, I would recommend that you use only 4 pencils maybe 5 pencils at most when you're doing, when you're doing graphite pencil drawings, especially portraits, because it can get a little, a little bit difficult to track where you used which pencil. And the thing is that sometimes when you're looking at a portrait from up close, it's difficult to uh, notice which areas are really darker. So you see, when you uh, move uh, slightly away from the portrait, it's easier, or when you squint your eyes, it's easier to notice these larger relationships between larger areas of lighter and darker value. And darker pencils will stand out much more than the lighter ones, uh, but when you're looking at a drawing from up close, you tend to get caught up in the details and the textures, and sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to notice these relationships. So one of the ways of fixing that is to try to move away from your drawing and to see if there are any distortions, if there are some parts which need to be made a lot darker or some parts that need to be made lighter. And I have noticed these things as I was, uh, as I was doing my portrait. I had to make quite a few adjustments. But, like I said, when you're using a great number of pencils, it can be a little bit difficult to decide which grade you should use. So to simplify the process, it's better to use just four or five pencils. One of the most famous approaches to graphite pencil drawing is the five pencil method by Daryl Tank. And I have to admit that I've learned a lot from him. He's an older, more experienced artist. But I don't work quite as much with graphite nowadays. I mostly use either charcoal or colored pencils. So I'm probably not the best person to talk about graphite. Uh, but let me get back to talking a little bit about these specific pencils. So. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I, w I wanted to do another test, a larger, more challenging test of these pencils. And I think they performed pretty well. I think uh, they are just better than regular graphite pencils, in my opinion. But that's just me. I mean, uh, some of the more experienced graphite pencil artists who are used to conventional, traditional graphite pencils may have, may have a different opinion, but I found that these work and that they are obviously a lot less reflective. Now you can see under the jaw that there's a little bit of shadow going to the other side. Like I said, the, the light source is a little bit complex, 
but I'm shading the other side of the face and uh, making a bit more progress uh, with my portrait. Uh, I'm also trying to define some of the edges here around the, around the mouth and the nose. Trying to see if the mouth looks a little bit too wide, if the teeth look a little bit too big, although I think she does have slightly big teeth. Uh, these shadows on the forehead are nice, so it's good to have such uh, shadows because they, they help to create that feeling of depth. So if you look at the bangs on the right, they kind of feel like they're sticking out in front of the forehead because of those shadows and because of the contrast between the, the rest of the forehead and those shadows. So contrast in value is extremely important if you want to show uh, depth and volume in your drawings. And I've talked about that many many times, I'm probably getting boring, but to the new viewers I probably won't be. Um, anyway, I'm going to link to the uh, to the previous video where I did a more thorough test and review of these pencils if you want to check that out. I'm kind of wrapping things up here, finishing her jacket on the on the right as well, doing a little bit of shadow. Um, and just making sure that the textures are smoother, adding some details to the neck and basically wrapping things up. Um, I want to remind you to give me a like and comment on my videos. I also apologize if there are any background noises. Uh, my house is kind of noisy because of the kids. It is what it is. Um, so don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to check out my other videos. And if you want to see more content and longer videos, don't forget to check out my Patreon. I decided to add or modify these highlights in the eye a little bit more. Just putting down some finishing touches to my portrait. And uh, I'm also putting down some finishing touches with a pencil eraser as well. I'm going to put my signature in the in the lower right corner here and now my portrait is done I think I hope you like it and I'm gonna see you in the next one bye for now